All right, ladies and gents, welcome to an episode of the Intoxicated Sports Report. He's Emerson Hip. I'm Gage Samoji, and sitting in... Oh, wait. No, he's not he's here. Right here. No. Boo. No. Danny said he was going to be here. The Prince of the Peanut Gallery. Mr. Naked and Famous himself. <laughs> Mr. Naked and Famous. He's not here. We're sad. Bailed. But Straight in the fucking heart. He chose lobster and steak over us. Fair enough. Surfing and turfing. Can't beat it. Oh, that is surfing and turfing, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Lobster's pretty good, though. I don't really blame him for ditching out on us for... Fine, lobster. Danny, fine. It's all right. You get not, a pass. I'm not hurt. I'm not hurt or anything. <laughs> it's fine. No hurt feelings. It's fine. Yeah. How you doing, man? Doing good, dude. Yeah, How are you? Good. Doing good. I'm drinking this really nice cocktail that you made. Yeah. I mean, well, what naked, is it? Naked you and Famous. Want, you want to explain? Yeah, Naked and Famous. Naked and Famous, named after... <laughs> after Danny Del Santo. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, when he gets naked, it is... It's special. famous, for <laughs> sure. What's in it? You want to tell uh, us? So this is a mezcal cocktail with um, chartreuse, also some Aperol, and some lime juice. That's good. Yeah. So this, is also, this is also our drink of the week. It is, yes. So you will see that on Instagram? Yes, you will. Um, it's good. Yeah, for, you, for people who like mezcal and they don't know what kind of cocktail to make out of it, do this. I would recommend it. Mezcal, is, it's, it's good. It's interesting. It's nice different. Little, it's unique. It's smoky. It's, smoky. it's different. Yeah, sure. If you don't like the smoky, peaty flavor, obviously you may not like this. But yeah. I think even someone who doesn't really like that, this would probably pass because it's not over the top. Mm -hmm. You know, the smokiness is mellowed out by the other ingredients. Mm -hmm. But I think they're damn good. I think it's good, too. I think it's a good drink. And I think one of these episodes... You mentioned it earlier. We gotta have like a wine, yes. a wine episode. Absolutely. I don't think we've ever Absolutely. drank. You said I don't think we've ever drank a glass of wine on I, this show. I can't which, recall, I mean, which is shocking to me. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of wine in this house. Yes. So, and I love. Know. I am the biggest whore for any kind of red wine. <laughs> there you go. I yeah. really am. White wine. Yeah, I haven't really gr grown a taste for it yet. Yeah. Maybe next week. We got a bottle right here. Yeah. It's a Merlot. Merlot. Is Merlot good? Oh, it was whatever. I mean, wine is wine. We don't have to drink that one necessarily. No, I mean, we could try it. Right. Yeah, you can right. pop up open right now if you want. <laughs> no, no, we got some other stuff going on. Yes, yes, we do. Um, what's on tap today, my friend? What is on tap today is, you know, our normal local sports report. Yes, sir. We have to talk about, you know, Buster Posey. So sad. Retired. So sad. A little too soon. But happy for him. Happy yeah. for him. Yeah. More baseball news besides that. A little bit of college football. Some NFL, and then, unfortunately, kind of for us, I'm sure the listeners don't really care, yeah. but NASCAR season did end, it so this is going to be the last week that we talk about NASCAR heavily. Right, right. Um, you, you made a good point last week that most of our listeners probably don't really care about NASCAR. <laughs> right. Right. And I don't even necessarily do myself. I, I've gotten more into it now that we've had this whole pool going for right. the last couple of years. Right. Um, We'll get to it, but I'm a very happy boy over here. I bet you are. Very happy, very happy. <laughs> I bet you are. Very happy. There's going to be a little punishment involved with this, too. Yeah. So, start us off here, sir. Yeah, so, uh, local sports, Sharks are sitting fourth in the Pacific Division right now with a 6-4-1 and one record. So, they they started off really good. They did. They were off to a 4-0 start. Kind of been struggling. And now, they're, they're fourth in their division, not the conference. Division, yeah. They are uh, holding the number one wild card spot in the Western Conference. Yes. Currently. They are on the road tonight against Calgary. Yes. They were watching a little bit of that game. It was nothing, nothing in the first period. Last week checked. So. And, and let me just say, I mentioned this earlier, Calgary's uniforms are nice. Oh, yeah. They're, that C with the flame on the side of it is they classic. They it's a classic. The, They're not an original six, though, are they? No, no. no. They actually used to be the Atlanta Flames back in the day. Okay. Yeah. But I see their uniforms, you know, it's that, that red and yellow, and it looks like the Chiefs. It does a little bit. But it's, 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 it's a nice classic. Yeah. I like them, too. Jersey. So go sharks as always. Yep. Um, so I woke up this morning. <laughs> I, I woke up this morning and I checked, you know, Instagram before you know I went to work and all that while I was laying in bed. And I stumbled upon your boy Steph Curry dropped a fifty burger, and I was thinking to myself, this motherfucker is gonna boast bad today. So you know what? What I'm happy about is they don't give out the championship after ten games. You're right. But if they did, your team would get it because. They My, look nice. They look nice. They look nice. I can't say I've watched that many games of the Warriors, but nine and one. You know, you know you, and you, I don't care what the, I don't care who they play, if it's bad or good. 
You go on the players in front of you, and they are the best up to this point right now. They took it to the Hawks last night, who were in the Eastern Conference Finals last year, if I'm not mistaken. Did Trey Young play? He did. Did he have a decent game? Uh, I wasn't really paying attention. I was more, you know, interested yeah. in Steph's 50. And I, this, I, I didn't realize <laughs> he played Atlanta, but I like this because I've always called Trey Young diet Steph Curry. <laughs> He's, yeah. not, he's not. He's not Steph Curry, but this yeah. game he's, is he's pretty good. very similar, good and that's why I wanted the Kings to draft Trey Young. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if you. I don't know if you remember me saying this a while back. I know they have De'Aaron Fox. I think they could, they could have made it work. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, absolutely. But um, I mean, it's been it's been crazy to watch the Warriors this year and how well their bench is playing. Because Steph actually, his overall number, he's not really shooting the ball that great. Um, I'm obviously at a fifty spot yesterday, but. Uh, also, shout out to Gary Payton Jr. Yeah, on the second. The second, yeah. He been making a lot of high, highlight reel. Dude, that guy can fly. He's, he's cool. He's only like six three, but he's just putting on a just yeah. like a dunk contest every night. He's out there, and he's one of those guys who's been kind of going through the G League for a long right. time. Yeah, he's not kind of super young. In and out. Yeah, but he can play some defense. Of course, just like his dad. Of course, his dad is the great glove. Right. Yeah, the glove. Yeah. Won a lot of defensive player of the year awards. Or I think no, I think he won one. Or one. But I think he's the only guard. Or, he's the only guard to win it. There you go. Yeah. And but he's I think he made the all first team nine times. Yeah. As a guard, it's right. It's incredible. He's very well decorated. So up to this point, you've been right. I laughed in your face a couple weeks ago about the Warriors winning the championship, and they haven't. They have not won the they championship. Haven't. But this trajectory is looking pretty nice. Also coming in tonight. My uh, other finals prediction with the Sixers are second best record in basketball ball. I just want to say that. I got a lot of heat for that one, too. But can I say this real quick? I think, you might think I'm crazy, but I think Clay Thompson, when Clay Thompson does come back, it's, I think it's going to hurt the Warriors a little bit because it's going to take them a little time to get that, well, yeah. put that mojo back. No, I, I don't, I don't uh, disagree with that at all. When you bring someone back into the fold, especially since he hasn't played a regular season game in, in over two years, and, yeah, in forever. And I don't care, you know. I'm sure he's, you know, he's, he's probably on the treadmill. He's probably on the bike. Yeah. But you can't, but you, you can't train for actual gameplay. Chemistry with the team and whatnot. Yeah, that you can't replicate that outside. And of the I expect it to come pretty quick because they have obviously played together for what eight plus years. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see too how they do bring him back. Like, mm -hmm. is he going to be starting right away, playing 35 minutes, or I, I wouldn't expect I, that. I imagine there's going to be a leash. Right. You know, maybe just because of the, like what we we're saying, twenty to twenty-five minutes to start out yeah. and kind of work his way in shape. Yeah, um, but you've been right. They play the Timberwolves tomorrow night, <coughs> which will probably be another win. I would hope so. Because Timberwolves, they're not. That. They're three and six. Three and six. Yeah. Uh, another, how's, how's that D'Lo trade looking, boys? Yeah. <laughs> another team that's not looking great, but it comes to no surprise to anybody. Is my Sacramento Kings are five and six, tenth in the West. They're doing okay. Lost to Phoenix last night. They're sitting in that 10 spot that you predicted. Look, 10 spot, yeah. <laughs> hey. It's, I like it's early. It's early, man. All I'm asking is just give me that, just give me a playoff spot or some close to it. You know what I mean? I'm kind of feeling I'm feeling like they're going to. I don't know why. Yeah, I hope they, you're right. Yeah. I hope I'm right too. Just five and six. That doesn't sound great. Yeah, it doesn't sound great. Whatever. It's early. They should have drafted Luca. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of teams could have, should have, and would have. But the Kings really should have. Yeah, you're right, you're right. But I've mentioned that. Plenty of times, but Harrison Barnes, He's you know your old boy, yeah. Mister couldn't hit a shot in the 2016 Finals, Ugh. has 22 points. This you know averaging 22 points a game, yeah. which is nice. And only 13 shots too. That's good. That's not bad at he all. He hit a game winner earlier in the season. I, I guess, think I, you're right. Yeah. I forgot. I forget against who, but hey. I've always liked Harrison Barnes. Back, yeah. when, back when the Warriors were in their heyday before KD got there, he was a good compliment. He was always one of my favorite Warriors if yeah. I had if I had to pick one. Yeah. I, don't know, I just like his game. I feel like he he should have blossomed into something more than he did, but it was probably kind of hard with Steph and Clay being on the team. Yeah. You know. So shout out Harrison Barnes and the Kings. Hey, yeah. The Raiders officially released Henry Ruggs, which was yeah, it pretty much happened like hours after we completed our last episode. Yes. And seemed inevitable. Which yeah, it just doesn't come as a surprise. Yeah. They did yeah. pick up Deshaun Jackson, though, which is kind of they interesting. Did. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, see how he fits in. I happened to pick up Hunter Renfro because I knew he'd get some fight. Yeah. And he, he did all right for me over the weekend. Didn't win, but, you know, we have to get into that. Wah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Lost, 7 and 2. Oh, I didn't win. I lost <laughs> another close game. Oh, the Raiders, uh, yeah. It's, it's getting kind of rough for the Raiders. They, yeah. they had another player who, like on his Instagram. Oh, yeah, was, Damon Arn or. Wait, I forget who it is, but he had, like, guns on his yeah, Instagram Damon story. Arn, yeah. They released him as well. You know, I'm not nothing against the Raiders. Really, their fans kind of annoy me at times, but 
I gotta, you know, root for him. You know, after the Gruden thing and then this, you got, you right. can't help but root for him. Yeah. And we'll get to my picks later, but I'm gonna give you a little secret. I think Ooh. I picked the Raiders over the Chiefs. Oh boy. I'm picking, I'm picking dogs this week. By the way, dogs. I'm picking straight dogs. You're just going whipping back and forth, right? Yeah, I picked dogs two weeks ago and it fucked me. But I'm gonna try again. So, but we'll get there. <laughs> so there was not just one big retirement in the Bay Area this year. Ooh. Uh, earthquakes legend. Chris Wondolowski, Wando, as they call him. Wando. He played his final game of his career on Sunday. Uh, scored a goal, too, which is cool. Um, and as their season came to an end, um, he leaves as the all time goal leader in MLS history with 171. No kidding. Yeah. And he's been with the Earthquakes since, well, he started with them in like 2005, and then they deceased and moved to Houston, and he joined the Houston team. And then they traded uh, him back to the Earthquakes when they became a team again. So he's pretty much been an Earthquake. His Pretty much, oh, yeah. Right. And that was in 2009. And we've had the honor to see him play. We have, yeah. You know, I'm not going to act like I'm a huge Earthquakes fan. <laughs> I know Chris Wondolowski. Right, right. He's, uh, a, he's a local boy, though. He was born in Danville, went to De La Salle. Really? Oh, okay. He went to Chico State as well. Oh, so he's... Yeah, he's... He, he's Northern California, born in oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I like that. Yeah. He was, well, yeah, we saw him play. Yeah, yeah. He's also uh, had, a, you know, 35 games for the U.S. national team. 11 goals. That's cool. And how, yeah. how old is he? Is he pretty old? He's like know? 38, I think. Okay. Yeah, so he, he definitely... Played a full. It's it's his time. It's time. Yeah, he wasn't playing every day anymore. So no, it was it was. I think before the season they kind of knew that it was going to be his last year. But yeah, made it official on Sunday. Nice. Giants news. The president of baseball operations, Farhan Zaidi. Yes. Executive of the year. I think well deserved. I too. think that was. I mean the, the his ability to you know dumpster dive and turn these guys into stars. Well, not stars, but, you know, big contributors, um, like Lamont Wade and uh, Darren Ruff, you, you know, you name it. The list goes on and on, so I think that was well-deserved, and obviously the Giants won a bunch of games this year, so no, no shock there. <clears throat> Which you would think, you know, we'll get there, but Gabe Kapler probably will win manager. I would, I would hope so. I would hope so. The Giants also declined Johnny Cueto's option. Not really a shock mm -hmm. uh, for next year. So he is a free agent. Probably not going to be seeing a reunion there. But Johnny Cueto was, he was kind of a fan favorite. He wasn't, didn't have a great career as a Giant. Had, no. had a year where he was good. But uh, Yeah, I'm not going to. No, know, I don't think anyone's sad about this. Like when I think of Giants greats or, you know, I'm not going to think about Cueto. Right, right. I can't even think of like a good Cueto game. Yeah, I mean, this first year that he was with the Giants when they went to the playoffs, he was, he was pretty damn good, but. I think more than anything, he was just kind of fun to watch, like his yeah. little Yeah, whenever I think of Quaid, I think of a shimmy. But I mean, yeah, he's yeah. done that before he's in the Giants, right. so. It's nothing new. Yeah. But he was definitely fun to watch. No, mm -hmm. no question about it. I would, one thing I'll say about Quaid that I noticed him playing, every time, like, end of, end of the inning, he'll always take off his hat oh, and yeah. walk to the dugout. <laughs> right, right, the hat yeah. off. That's yeah. probably something he's just used to, and it's part of his mojo. Yeah. But probably doesn't really like having the hat on. That's <laughs> really what it is. Yeah, probably. Also, Brandon Crawford, Gold Glover, for the Ooh. fourth time in his career. That's all right. Okay. Yeah. I like that. You, I, I don't think many people would have suspected that he'd be back in that conversation after mm -hmm. the couple years that he had. But, uh, yeah, he was, he was awesome this year in all, in all facets. Probably going to get some MVP votes, too. Yeah. I think I, um, I was listening to Murphy Mack today, and they said that he wasn't in the top three of MVP voting, though. He wasn't, which I, I wouldn't think he'd be that high, but he... When, uh, as a voter for the MVP, the writer gets uh, 10 votes. Oh. Like, they literally rank them 1 through 10. Mm -hmm. And so, you can vote for as many as 10 guys. Okay. <clears throat> so, he'll definitely get some points. And also, gold glovers for the A's. Sean Murphy got his first, young catcher. And then, Matt Chapman, his third. No shock there. He's, he's Matt pretty, Chapman's good. He, he's pretty slick. He's good, yeah. I, I really hope they can keep him around uh, for the sake of A's fans, really. <laughs> yeah. Him and Matt Olson. Um, but... I would not be shocked if we don't see them in A's uniforms for too it's much just, longer. It's just the way the A's work. Yeah. I even read an article today saying that they're expected to shed a left salary this year, so or payroll, rather, which is not ideal. No, it's like at what point do they realize what they're doing isn't working? It's tough because the, their ownership just doesn't quite have the, the cash to, uh, yeah. to, to keep a team together mm -hmm. and pay free agents and whatnot. All right, and to some sad Bay Area news, yeah. but you know, no. it's kind of it's sad, yeah. but it's like melancholy. It's melancholy, yeah. yeah. 
Uh, Buster Posey has decided to retire after, I think, 13 seasons, really 12, yeah. but 13 seasons. Um, and what, he only played 11 of those or 10 of those? Yeah. Because they count the year that... Yeah, like the rookie year where he played like mm -hmm. 17 games or something. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but man, what a career he had. It's, it was one, for me. It was one of those things where I saw the news and like, no, like you, you, you can't. It's you yeah, why what, now? What do you mean? <laughs> yeah, what are we doing here? You're, you just had one of the better. You years. just came back and you had a great year. Yeah. Um, so it was just it was almost just it was shock, but like I don't know. I I, I didn't know how to feel about it. I was definitely sad. Yeah, he's he was. And it just the, didn't feel like like the timing was right. But obviously, we're not Buster Posey. He no. played catcher, which is yeah. tough. He's a family man. Yeah. You know, he's got like what three or four kids. He's got I think four and you know, he had the twins that yeah. you know, he adopted. Exactly. So. It's 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 sad. Yeah. You know, because he was he's one of the best giants ever. Yeah, I mean he's probably the Mount Rushmore of Giants. I'm I'm thinking about like the most influential may not be the, the perfect word for it, but you know players in the, of my generation like that I've watched. Like he's yeah. he's up there. It's like him and Steph Curry and Bum Garner's in the conversation mm -hmm. too, Barry Bonds. Yeah, but Buster, I mean, he was the guy. He was like the, you know, you, you could have said he was like the face of baseball at one point. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Probably like in twenty twelve. Coming around up that MVP, yeah, yeah. I mean, three, yeah, three. I mean, coming, yeah, exactly. If you want to read him off, three time champion, twenty ten NL Rookie of the Year, two thousand twelve NL MVP, two thousand twelve NL Batting Champion. Seven-time All-Star, four-time Silver Slugger, one Gold Glove, and two-time Comeback Player of the Year. Award. Right. Yeah, can't forget that. Also caught <clears throat> what two no hitters and a perfect game. Mm -hmm. He it's he's one of the best catchers of all time. He yeah. has to be right. He's 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 up there. I mean, his maybe the, maybe like the statistics aren't there, but I mean the, the longevity is, is the thing that I think yeah. would hold you back. Yeah, he doesn't have like you know he didn't play as long as like Johnny Bench or, or Yogi, Yogi yeah. Berra, or even like. Like the other, like Pudge. Pudge, yeah, yeah. Pudge played for a long time. Yeah, I, I feel like he should be a Hall of Famer, but I could see why you would question it based on the lack of, you know, games played and whatnot. Um, and I think you were you saying yesterday that if he were to get in the Hall of Fame, he'd have the least amount of hits to be a Hall of Famer. I think so. I as think a, it's as, like as, a, as a position player, right, right, yeah. I, I think it's. I, I which, have to double check. Which that. that'd be. It's an incredible stat. That's the least that you don't have to look for right now. Right. But that's, I mean, he only has 15, he had 1,500 on the nose. Yeah. Yeah, which is pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. I mean, I think he'll, I think he'll get in the three championships. Yeah, that really helps. If he didn't, if he didn't never won a championship, no one would talk about him like this. No. Um, but that definitely is a huge factor. Arguably the best position player on all three of those championship teams. Yeah, I think so. Right? Yeah. And I don't think anyone would debate that. The most important, at least. Yes, exactly. Like, he was, like, the face of those championship teams, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it's... It's sad. It's sad. It's, it's... I was... The other thing was, like, how are we going to replace him? It was, was my next line. I mean, I didn't, I didn't want to think that way, but I... Yeah. Like, that's... This year's team, he had such a big impact on. Yeah. And if we want to still be good, which I... The Giants will still be good next year, but... Well, so I mean, Buster, you got to think with, you know, Farhan, he'll... He make, makes is making us feel good that he could. Right, I, I do out. have a lot of faith in yeah. Farhan. So, what do you think the Giants are gonna do at the catcher position since Posey did retire? It'll be interesting because obviously Jelly Bart has. Uh, I'll take a drink for that. <laughs> I set you up for that one. He did, <laughs> but do you know it actually is? Is it a shot? It's a shot. <laughs> Fuck. So, for, so for anybody, I thought about I thought about this for I thought about this for a week now, uh, setting Emerson up because he said. Back uh, August thirtieth of last year, he said every time says every time Emerson says something about Joey Bart, he has to take a shot. <laughs> <laughs> I I mean, did you, did you remember that after you said Joey Bart? I kind of kind of did. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't I didn't realize it was shot. I kind of I had a feeling it was. But... <laughs> I'll give you this since Posey did retire. We're probably gonna this, talk more about Joey Bart. This is because now it's relevant. You know, Joey yes, Bart yes. was not very relevant for a while. And you know what? I'll take a shot for Posey. Okay. Lace me something. Yeah, I'll take some dark, dark. some dark liquor. I will, I'll, for you, because I love you, I will delete this. All right. <laughs> because you're going to get hammered on every, like, every, you know, during baseball season. I mean, I think we decided that if, if it was not relevant, that 
I wouldn't be punished for it. I just wanted, I just wanted you to, to, <laughs> to get, to pay your dues yeah. once. So that's yeah, it. Fair enough, fair enough. So, um, so yes, I think Joey Bart will get a chance. Okay. Um, assuming he, you know, does everything in spring training and whatnot to, to make the coaches and staff think that he's going to be ready. He had a big season in AAA, so he finally proved that he could hit AAA pitching. Um, obviously that's not the same as major league pitching, so it's going to be a test. And I think they're still going to have Kirk Casale around. Yeah. Which he was fine as a backup this year. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be shocked to see them explore some veteran options on the free agent market as well. It's a tough loss. What the Giants need to do next year retires number. D- let's, let's not wait. I'm so with you. Let's not wait. I'm so with you. Let's not wait. It's, I think it shouldn't be a question. Make it on like the 20th day of one of the months during the, or you know, like make it like something cool. He, the number has to be retired. Let's do like what they did for Barry Bonds. Yep. Remember we had the number 25 in the mm-hmm. outfield? Mm-hmm. Put number 28 behind the plate. Right, yes, that would be tight. Right, that would be tight. right, right. Giants, yeah. Giants, call me. I got yep. ideas. <laughs> I know, you have the idea. I have the idea. <laughs> do it next year. Next year, yes. Because, I mean, no one's going to wear 20 ever again. They're going to do it eventually. Yeah. But they have to do it. The only thing, the only reason they, they would wait is because, obviously, it's fresh. That Buster supposedly retired. So they, 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 Maybe down the line to, re, to kind of remember him a little more. Okay. Is the only reason why they wouldn't do that. Okay, but but I, I'm I'm kind of with you. Just do it. I mean, yeah. it's, it's already. I mean, it's it's implied that no one's ever gonna wear 28 exactly. again. Yeah. Kind of like it was implied that no one was gonna wear 25 again, even though they did officially retire for, for a like long 15 time. years. Yeah, or 12, whatever it was. He this man number retired. He's gonna get that. Here's another idea: the joint the joint statue out there with him and Bumgarner uh, hugging uh, each other. Dude, that would be sick. Do that. That would be sick. Do you think Bum's number should be retired? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Obviously, they're not going to do what it was. I don't think anybody should wear number 40 for the Giants ever again. I don't think anybody will. They're going to retire Bob Garner's number. They have to. Yeah. Like, Sandoval, they're not going to retire Sandoval. I really want to put a bold prediction down that Bob Garner will pitch for the Giants again. (laughs) (laughs) But. You want to waste the next (laughs) Like, Sandoval, they probably won't retire the number. Nah, it's Pablo now. Um, I think somebody's already wearing 40 on the Giants. I think one of the pitchers. Yeah, yeah, I think Alvarez. One of the relievers, right? Yeah. The three numbers the Giants will retire, because I think we both agree on this, is you know Posey, Bumgarner, and Bochy. Yeah, Bochy would be a good one. Timmy could. Timmy could. Because he was so electric for a couple of years. Yeah, the Cy Young. Yeah, and they won a World Series. And, you know. Do you count him? Do you count? What, how many World Series do you count for Timmy? The, the two? Because, I mean, he was on the team for the third one, but he didn't really. I would give him three. I mean, yeah. he pitched on that team. Okay. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like Carson Wentz being a Super Bowl champion. I definitely would give him credit for the second one yes. because he, he was a part of that. Yeah, okay. 14, 14 he did pitch, I think, in, in a game in the World Series. I can't remember what I think, he came, out, I think he came out of the bullpen. Yeah, for what, like one appearance, maybe? Yeah. yeah. It's like a total I mean, he gets it. Yeah. <clears throat> so you want to take a shot for yeah, your boy Joey Bart and Joey our Bart. boy Buster Posey? Yeah. To the catching position. Yes. And also, don't forget the Giants' first round pick in twenty twenty was also a catcher, Patrick Bailey. Okay, so we got him in five point two. Yes, <clears throat> I think it's wishful thinking to think we'll ever get another catcher like Buster Posey in the Giants organization ever again. You yeah. never know, but he's kind of he kind of seems like he's just one of one. He was he was the man. Yeah, he he just had a way about him. He was just stoic, you know, and he just didn't, didn't want to be the guy, but he was the guy. Calm, cool, and collected. Yeah, absolutely. I wouldn't say he didn't want to be the guy. He just didn't, didn't act like he wanted yeah. to be the guy. You know? He he kind of reminds me of Derek Jeter a little bit. Yep, big time Jeter vibes. Not nearly as good as an offensive player and all that, but you know, like won the championship his rookie year like Jeter did. Like the face of the team, you know. Obviously, Jeter was the face of baseball. Yeah. I think, like I said, Buster Posey was kind of the face of baseball for a little bit. Both never had any kind of allegations. Never heard anything in the news about him that was negative. Yeah. So I always kind of think of Buster Posey, kind of like my Derek Jeter. Right, right. You know what I mean? I had a funny thing about Derek Jeter. This is super random. But I watched this video clip of Johnny Damon on uh, Letterman. And this, the clip is just him saying, and freaking Jeter, man, how good is that guy? <laughs> <laughs> how good is that? Damon saying it or Johnny, Letterman? Johnny Damon saying it. Jeter, how good is that guy? <laughs> Jeter is the captain. Jeter is the dude. He's the captain. He's the dude. Our captain. And speaking of past giants, 
Pablo Sandoval got his fourth World Series ring. Four. Sure did. Count him. You got it. <laughs> did he, like, release in the middle of the year because he was playing so bad? <laughs> you got up to, like, that yeah. red-hot star and hitting all those pinch-hit home runs. And he, uh, he really so, he, so he played, you know, almost 70 games for the Braves this year. Did he actually so, put in that many? Okay. Yeah. Well, Better technically, I think the number I saw was 69. I don't want to say it out loud because it's... I hate 69 jokes. Don't, don't be a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he's a four-time World Series champion. There you go, Pablo. I don't think he's sniffing the Hall of Fame, but this is really cool for him. Yeah, no, yeah, good for him. I mean, he's got some some big moments in his career. He's got nothing to be ashamed of. No. As a, as a ball player. No. It's funny that he even got picked up by a team this yeah. year. Yeah. But good for him. I wonder how many games you have to play for a, a, like a team <clears throat> in the year they win the World Series to get a ring. I think it's only one. Really? I think it's only one, but I could be wrong. I feel like it should be at least like 10. I kind of feel like, too. Like, like there should be like an innings, you know, threshold you got to hit yeah. as a pitcher. And yeah. like, and I mean, he so. played He played damn near, what, almost half a season? No, half yeah. a season? Yeah, it was pretty it, close. Close. Yeah, you know, more than two-thirds of a season. Yeah, so he, he helped them. Or more than one-third, sorry. Yeah. 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 He wasn't there during the postseason, but hey. He definitely yeah. helped them win games in April. Yeah. Which games in April will count just as much as games in September. Yeah. But congrats to Pablo. Four time. Put some respect on his name. <laughs> I just, I, I can't not think of him going deep twice off Verlander. Three times. Well, off Verlander in the World Series uh, game and then again in the same game. I remember watching that game with my uncle and he was like, are you fucking serious yeah. right now, Pablo? It's like he took him dead center pretty much twice and then, yeah. And this was when Verlander was, was like at the peak, peak of his power. Peak, peak, yeah. I think he'd won the MVP the previous year and was... Won the I don't know. Did he win the Triple Crown? He may have, and then I, I, he was either a Cy Young winner or like top three yeah. that 2012 year. This Paloma, by the way, is it good? No, no. Let me no, taste that no, shit. No, it's not good at all. I'm powering through. It tastes like it's okay. It's just a little like it's weird. The, the finish is a little dead. I can't. It tastes like something that I've had before, but I don't know what it is. I'll get back to you. If I figure it out. It's not great. No, it's not great. Um, it's got a weird, yeah, weird something about it. Well, I'm going to finish it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you do usually finish. Hmm. Uh, the Cardinals became the first team to have five gold glove winners on a, in a single season. That's crazy. That is crazy. That's... And then some of the names I saw were like, I didn't realize they, you know, put together seasons that were yeah. gold glove worthy, but good for them. Yeah. <clears throat> and Nolan Arenado being one of those guys. Wins his. This is amazing to me. He wins his ninth consecutive. I know it's not like a record or anything like that, but winning nine straight. And to, that's to, to start his career. Yes, too. to start his career, he's won nine that straight. Is, that part is a record. Yes. Is as it? an infielder. Sorry, as okay, an infielder. As an infielder. First infielder to, infielder to do that. Wow. Um, and I think I looked up the most gold gloves won by a third baseman. It's like some dude from a long time ago. And it's like 16. So I don't know if Ar Arenado will be able to get that. Oh, was it uh, Brooks Robinson? I think it might have been. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, you gotta think, and Nolan Arenado is probably gonna win more. Four more of these. I wouldn't be surprised. At least, right? Yeah. Or, or, or yeah. I don't, it, know if, I don't know if he won four I, more straight. Yeah, the fact that it's nine to start your career is it's crazy. unreal. Yeah. Ichiro was the only guy to do more to start, and he did 10. So yeah. I, I wouldn't be shocked if he wins it, you know, again next year. Yeah. So you gotta, think, you gotta think Nolan Arenado is on that Hall of Fame trajectory. Yeah. Right. And the fact that he actually put together a, a very solid offensive season outside of Coors Field. Yeah. You know, first chance he's gotten to do that, and he, exactly. he played well, so kudos to that. Yes. Because, obviously, when you're a Rocky, it's hard to yeah. be give fair opinions, <laughs> you know? All right, so the MLB Awards finalists have been announced. So, Emerson, yes, the floor is yours. So, AL MVP finalists, Shohei Otani, Vlad Guerrero Jr., Marco Simeon. Shout out to Simeon, man. Dude, he had a fucking crazy year. 40 plus yes. home runs? Crazy. Out of nowhere. I mean, I'm sorry, Ace fans, that you got to endure that. But he did the Josh Donaldson. Went from the Ace to the Blue Jays and just became a superstar. That's cold. <laughs> You're not wrong, though. Uh, I, I think Otani's going to probably get that, though. Uh, and do you think it's deserved over Vlad Jr.? It's close, but I think it's Otani. Only, and, and I only say this because if the Blue Jays made the playoffs, I think it would be Vlad. And I hate that that's like, the deciding factor, but I, I believe that's why he... I mean, obviously the Angels didn't go to the playoffs either, but I think the fact that Otani was such a force on the you know on the mound and as a hitter, yes. never seen that. Really Something we haven't seen. We, I mean, no one's pretty much ever. ever no, I mean, because even when Brave Ruth was pitching, he wasn't hitting. I don't think anybody that's living on this planet has seen this happen. No, 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 no chance. Uh, 
Um, I mean, some people were born, you know, in the twenties, but or, you know, yeah. it'd be like someone who remembers that is like one hundred and ten. Yeah, and people won't make it that long. The hype with Otani is outrageous, but it's deserved. He's he's, he's that good. he's that good. Yeah, he's he's, good. he's insane. Over in the NL, Bryce Harper, Fernando Tatis Jr., and Juan Soto are the finalists. I think Tatis is going to get it out of those guys. Obviously, none of the guys on in this list made the playoffs either, which is odd. You got both leagues with three finalists that you know, none of them are on playoff teams, which you don't see very often. Yeah. Um, I'm, I think it's Tatis, just you know what he did. I know he missed some time, but forty home runs with the amount of time he missed, mm -hmm. plus he sold bases. Yeah, you know hitting it all over the yard. So I think it's his his award for sure. Uh, American League Cy Young, we got Lance Lane, Garrett Cole, and Robbie Ray. I think that's Robbie Ray's award to lose. Robbie Ray point. plays for? He's also with Toronto. Okay. So yeah, they're, they're oh. heavy in the uh, award department this year. There we go. And then National League, we got Max Scherzer, Corbin Burns, and Zach Wheeler. I think Zach Wheeler should win it. I don't think he's going to. Um, I only think he should win it because he has the most innings pitched by far out of these three guys. Um, the other guys have a little bit more dominant numbers, you know, outside of the innings pitch. Yeah. But I kind of feel like they might give it a Scherzer. Okay. But to me, it should be Zach Wheeler's award. And how many Cy Youngs has Scherzer already had? You know, I think he's got like three or four. He's got a lot. Yeah. He's, he's well decorated for sure. Uh, Ricky of the Years. American League, we've got Luis Garcia pitched for the Astros, and then two guys from the, the Rays, Randy Rosarena and Wander Franco. Mm -hmm. I think it's probably going to be a Rosarena. The funny thing about him, though, is he's played in two seasons before this, but he still qualifies as a rookie because he hasn't played enough games to, uh, okay. to not be, or he's still considered a rookie because of that. I want to know if anybody's made any a Rosarena jokes, a Rosaray. <laughs> nah. Yeah, nice with the Rays. Rays, Ray, Ray, call me. Mm -hmm. I got some ideas. <laughs> We're full of ideas. I did. I'm, I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. I'm ready. Um, and then nationally, we've got Jonathan India, who had a great year for the Reds. Uh, Trevor Rogers, pitcher for the the uh, Marlins, mm. and then Dylan Carlson, who's an outfielder for the Cardinals. Yeah. I think it's Rogers. He was he was pretty awesome on the mound. For the uh, Dylan Cardinalson. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> I get it. I, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Uh, <laughs> and then the managers of the year. Uh, in the American League, you got Dusty Baker, Scott Service, and Kevin Cash. I think it's Scott Service uh, for what he did with the Mariners. I mean, that team did not look like a playoff. Contender today. You're telling me Kev, push. you're telling me Kevin Cash is still the manager after what he pulled last year <laughs> against the Dodgers. I'm telling you, they're all robots now. They're all robots. That's I, I kind of think Gabe Kapler is kind of a robot now too. But but he's I mean yeah. they're winning games. Yeah. You've Got to give it to him. Uh, and then in the National League, Craig Council, Gabe Kapler, who we just mentioned for yes. the Giants, and Mike Schilt. I think it, Gabe Gabe's got to win it. Has to. 107 wins with a team that was projected to win. 75, give or take, on, in most books. Excuse me. How do, how do you beat that? You know. I mean, and I know it's not all about, you know, X's and O's and, you know, making the right decisions. you got to be able to rally a clubhouse together. Yeah. I think he, he did a great job of that. And who do you think could win this besides Gabe? <clears throat> um, out of those three. I would say, I don't think the Brewers were expected to be that great. So Council would, would certainly get some, some recognition. I mean... Mike Schultz probably going to get a lot of a lot of votes too because of the way that they put together that winning streak at the end of the year for the Cardinals. Yeah. Um, so. All right. We'll yeah, go, we, Gabe Kapler. We you. shall see. Yeah, I think I think Gabe's got that in the bag. Honestly. Gabe's also the best looking manager probably in the league, right? Maybe of all time. <laughs> Just throw that out there. Maybe of all time. <laughs> Wish I had a fucking jawline like that. Come on, dude, Joe Torre. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> that guy looks like the saddest fucking Italian guy on the planet. <laughs> looks like a sad Tony Soprano. I can't even do it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know he, he managed the Dodgers? Oh, uh, after the Yankees? For how long? Not, I don't think for very long. I'm pretty sure he was the manager uh, of the Dodgers. But yeah. <laughs> Go eat, eat some spaghetti with Lasorda. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone oh, dude. is listening, you should go look up this video of Gary Radnich from KMBR <laughs> roasting this Dodger fan. I'm going to watch it after. About right. Tommy Lasorda. It's fucking, it's glorious. If I had a soundboard, that would be all right. <laughs> Go eat some more. Go spaghetti some with Lasorda. <laughs> 
it's wow. it's top notch radio. It's it's pretty damn it's good. It's one of the best things I've heard in a long time. I forgot about it until right now. You mentioned Italians, I thought about the sorta <laughs> and spaghetti. Uh, I don't even know if Joe Torre is Italian, but it's time to get it. <laughs> he, looks like, he looks like an Italian. Right. <laughs> uh, all right, I think we should stop talking about baseball. We've done enough of that. Yes, we have. Oh, wow. I can turn my hat backwards now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. It's a little warm in here, huh? Mm-hmm. I haven't even run the heater since, like, you know, yeah. open the door a little Open the door? Yeah. <laughs> College football. Yes. Real quick. Uh... So, top 10 teams that, that fell this week. Wake Forest losing their first game of the year uh, to North Carolina. That was a 58 to 55. Yeah. They were on upset alert, so not super shocking. Yeah. I think actually UNC was favored in this game. Yeah. Um, so, no one's really shocked about this one. This was a shock. Number three, Michigan State dropping their first game of the year to Purdue, 40 to 29. Purdue also beat Iowa. Iowa. They were number two, so they're just. Good at wrecking seasons. For, yes, they are. For teams. What's Purdue's record right now? They're like five and four. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they just, they're good for a couple. <laughs> they're spoilers. Yeah, good. They're spoilers. They're like the Rams in, what, 2010? <laughs> right. Uh, CFP rankings came out just about an hour ago. Yes. Um, we got Georgia still at one. Bama still at two. Oregon moves up to number three with the loss for Michigan State. Ohio State moves up from five to four. So they are currently in. Um, I think this is big for Cincinnati, who's now at number five, because I think any of these teams could lose a game, and they could be in the conversation. The mo- most interesting part to me is that they left, or they put Michigan State behind Michigan, even though they just beat I was just Michigan. Gonna, I was just going to say, Michigan six? Yeah, so Michigan moves up number they have one? They only lost oh, okay. the one game in Michigan State. And Oklahoma still, still on, Oklahoma still They didn't play this week. Oh, okay. So... Still um, undefeated, though, yeah, at eight. Yeah, they would get a chance to play Baylor, who I think is ranked 13 this week. So that's that'd a be good, nice if they could beat big them. matchup. And they, they'll play Oklahoma State down the line, who is now number 10. Mm-hmm. So they have a chance to boost that resume. i got to think if they're undefeated, they win all, you know, all their games remaining and then the Big 12 championship game, they have to be in. That would be cruel. Have to. That would be absolutely cruel, because that, that last game is likely to be against a ranked team, yeah. or something at least decent. So... But that's that's where it, it gets a little shitty for Cincinnati, who doesn't have a, another team on their schedule that's very good. And they're point. undefeated, right? And they're undefeated, yeah. yeah. But not a Power 5 team, so I feel for them. But I, I think Oregon is not going to make it through the season without losing another game. Wow. They're just not that good. No. They're good, but they're not that good. All right, moving on to the NFL. <sighs> big, big news out of Cleveland. Yeah, this is... I don't even know how to feel about this. It's just a, it, it came. It was just a s- snowballed really fast. It's weird. Yeah, Odell Beckham Jr. has been waived, and he's officially a free agent because he cleared waivers today. Yes. At one o'clock our time. Um, a lot of rumors swirling about where he's going to go. Where do you think I, he's going to go? I heard that he wants to go to Green Bay. That's what I've heard. I've also heard he wants to go to Seattle, which I think is an yeah. interesting fit. They don't really need receivers, but where do I think he'll honestly land? Tampa Bay. You think so? Are they, are, they, are they talking about the Bucs? It, it just, I feel like anytime a good player is, you know, a yeah. free agent, Brady's like, come on. Right, right. Come on. I just, I don't see that as a fit because there's just too many. I don't think he would want to do that just because there's too many mouths to feed there. I mean, AB is the third receiver maybe on the team. But yeah, I mean, is he more worried about his stats or winning? Because I think his best chance of winning. Uh, I, I, think, I think he's stupid enough to say, I want to go to a team that is going to give me the ball. Yeah. I mean, Green Bay could do that for him. I think, and Seattle would too. I think Kansas City absolutely needs to make this happen. Happen. Yeah. They have. They should not even blink twice. Yeah. I don't. I don't know why they wouldn't. I mean, they're clearly struggling on offense right now. Yes. Um, with a quarterback that we've seen do amazing things. Oh. Um, str- they're struggling though. So I, I see what you mean. Yeah. I feel like they need him. They need. A, they need a little jolt. I think. I can't see how he wouldn't fit well in this offense. Um, <laughs> I can't see how he wouldn't fit well in this offense. Um, I just I don't see why they wouldn't want him. You know, let's do yeah. this. You know, and don't get it twisted. He's on my fantasy team, so I want him to go to the best option. I'm, that's what I'm thinking for you too. Like this, this could be huge for you. It'd be great. I think any team he goes to is going to be a good. Yes, it'd be better. It'd be better than what he was at. I, I think he's going to seek out a situation for himself that is going to be. Yes. You know. If I were to take a guess, I'll say Buccaneers. Fuck it. 
I, uh, that would be interesting. He'd be the fourth receiver on the team, though. I don't think he wants that. That's why I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you're right. Also, I wanted to mention real quick that came. I brought oh, to, right, I brought right, to right. your attention. Yes, you did. And I don't know if Zoe still listens to us regularly. Hopefully she does. Hopefully she does. And I might, and I might, and I might even tell her after Go we're listen. done. Yeah. Listen, because we mentioned her. At least skip to this point. <laughs> so in July of or July 13th of 2020, she said OBJ will be on the Patriots in 2021. Which is very and this possible. is very very possible. very possible. I like it. I I think I like that bit. Me too. He would be the number one guy for sure. Yes. I just don't know if they run an offense that really supports passing to the outside. I don't. I, I'm not sure, but and I think I don't want you know. I know what people might be thinking is you know OBJ is this big old star. Why would he want to go to a place like New England where Belichick runs shop? But I think some people need that. It worked with Randy Moss. He did. You know? I mean, Chad Chad Johnson played there. Mm-hmm. Didn't produce like you know Randy Moss, but he made it work. Yeah. I think it'd be a good fit. I don't think it'd be. Yeah, I think it'd be a, a solid fit. Um, so I think when players go to New England or they kind of want to go to New England, they know what they're getting themselves into. So they, you got it. You they, have they, to, or they, you're they, out they, of your they, mind. Put, they put their mind, yeah. the, the mindset. And and two for him, he could he could go there, and he's only going to be on a one year contract. So he, if he doesn't really like it, you know, yeah. So I, that could that could be a. a I don't I don't know what we're going to do if he is on the Patriots. <laughs> for Zoe, I mean, what could, what could we do? For what, him? So what? Could, weren't there other stipulations in that that? Uh, I thought there was something about him like winning a Super Bowl and then the next year going to the pick. Kind he of. said the Browns would go to the Super Bowl. She said the Browns would go to the Super Bowl this season. And I'm saving that for the next time she's on because she's gonna have to over that. No, gotcha. She said last. Actually, she said for this season. I think because gotcha. it was in 2020. Gotcha. No, that would have been last year then because it was before the 2020 season. Wasn't it? Didn't you say it was July? Yes, the same day. She said the same thing. Yeah, so it would have been for last year, right? That the part of them. Oh, going okay. Oh, yeah, I see what you yeah, mean. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But yeah, she does offer that. Yeah, that's why I'm, that's why I'm saving it. <laughs> yeah. I got some that are saved yeah. that people owe. But I mean, if he goes to the Patriots and she called that, that would be pretty badass. Yeah. So. I had to give her some touch. I'll let her know that we mentioned her. We give one more. We give one more listen. The funny thing is, the Patriots are in such a different situation than I feel like they were when she oh, made that call. She made that when Brady <laughs> was there. Still. So. Yeah. Like Mac Jones was an afterthought. <laughs> Or not even a thought. A forethought. Do we have to cut, talk about the Cowboys? I don't really want to talk about any football, if, no. if I'm being completely honest. But Oh, because, yeah. yeah okay. um, so the Cowboys. <laughs> oh, boy. They got smoked. Yes, they sure did. It was 30-16, to 16, the final score. They lost to the Broncos. But this wasn't even that close. You got some numbers? No, no, no. Not even <laughs> I, just, I just know I'm going to need this. <laughs> The Cowboys were losing thirty to nothing in this game. Oh my god! I watched this first half, and I, I think the reason why the Cowboys lost this game is because this is not ridiculous, but they went for and fourth down their first two drives, and to me that's blatant disrespect to the Broncos. That to me tells me that the Cowboys are like, you know what, we're gonna do whatever we want to you because we don't think you're even more close to us. Yeah. And the Broncos now are a five and four team, you know, and they're yeah, one and they're one of the better. In one of the better divisions too when it comes to wins. Right, right. The AFC West isn't bad. Yeah. They have a chance to win that division. Sounds crazy, but they do. Mm-hmm. Cowboys flat out lost this game. Hard to watch, you know, because they haven't lost a game since the first game of the season right. against the Buccaneers. But I think this was a loss that the Cowboys needed. Well, I think I think they we'll were too up. I think they were too high on their horses and they needed to get their asses kicked. I think you're right. And so this I, happens sometimes. It yeah. does. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm hoping the Cowboys when they play the Falcons this next week. They might take it to him. I, I hope they do. I think. And yeah. Dak, Dak didn't play well. Um, there was, I feel like there's drop balls too. I, I know yeah. one for sure, like to Tony Pollard that was went right through his yeah. hands. And like I said, I only watched the first half. I didn't watch the second half of the game, which yeah. I don't think I would have finished it anyways. Right. I, I did that with Manning too. I just <clears> this was a good loss for the Cowboys. You know, it's it's tough to see these kind of losses. Well, it's a bad loss, but one they needed. Bad, yeah, bad loss. When when the, okay, the devil devil loss, yeah, bad up. loss yeah. when they needed. Yeah. Thank you. A wake up call. But I want to make a point because it was kind of a weird week in the NFL. We can talk it about your, weird we week. can talk about your Niners, you know, in depth in a second. Yeah. So Cowboys lost to the Broncos, which I would think that everybody would think that the Cowboys would have win that game, right? Right. And your Niners lost to the Cardinals. Right. 
who had Colt McCoy. Yeah, and a lot of star, stars out. Yes. Not only stars, and so but I think, stars out. I think people were would think that the Niners would have won that game easily. Yeah. Raiders lost to the Giants. Raiders lost to the Giants, which I would, would pick the Raiders. Right. The Jags beat the Bills. <laughs> what the fuck? Also, this game was six nine, to, yeah. nine to six. Nine to six. Trevor Lawrence got hurt but came back. Okay. Happy for him. Yeah, good for him. Because, you know, we, we, we like T-Law around yeah, these we parts. Do. We do. Around these parts. <laughs> and the Titans beat the Rams. I don't think... I wouldn't have picked the Titans win this I game. I mean, the Titans are good, but uh, losing Derrick Henry and winning that same week against a really good team in, in, in pretty dominant fashion, too. Yeah. I don't think that was expected. It was just... Weird week for team, weird. teams that you know. I know anybody can win on any given Sunday. Right. Sounds cliche, but it's true. It is very true. And, and this week group. Um, honorable mention: <laughs> the Bears were close to being the Steelers. Oh man, Jimmy, the Steelers looking good. I'll give you that. Uh, they're, okay. they're, they're looking good. They're, yeah, win, okay. they're winning games. They're looking okay. Your record, you know, time. you are what your record is, and they're winning a winning record. I know he doesn't listen to, to us, but not not no credit given yet. Okay, okay. <laughs> it was just yeah. Things were off this week. It was it was funky. You know what I mean. So sure. if in the floor is yours with your 49ers, if you want to talk about. Them. Oh boy. Yeah, this was uh, this was a frustrating one. Obviously, with the Cardinals being without so many of their key players, Kyler Murray, easy one. But no DeAndre Hopkins. JJ Watt is probably done for the year. So that, but still a recent loss to for them. Um, Chase Edmonds, one their, you know, one of their two backs got hurt in the fir- first play from scrimmage for them. Mm-hmm. Um, so the Niners theoretically should have had to be upper hand in this, and I believe they were favored in this going into this game. I can't imagine they weren't. Yeah, I think they were favored by three or four. Regardless, they <laughs> did you watch this whole game? Or, I watched or... pretty much, you know, until it was not worth watching anymore. Yeah, they just continuously shot themselves in the foot. I mean, George Kittle loses his first fumble of his career, and they turn it. Cardinal turn it, which is, is impressive on his part. Right. But, but it sucks it happens when right. it happened when it did. Yeah. Cardinals turned into points. Brandon Ayuk catches a, makes an amazing catch, gets up and fumbles the ball like on the five yard line. Oh, that's tough. Cardinals turned that into points. Uh what's the other one? Oh, third third and like fifteen for the Cardinals. Or third third and long. I don't remember the remember the exact distance, but third and long. Uh Eric Armstead gets a sack and as he's coming down on uh, McCoy, he like kind of grazes his chin strap, and the ref throw it was the lamest uh, yeah. face mask flag. First down, next play, touchdown pass. <laughs> of course, it was just continuous b- bullshit by the Niners. It was this <laughs> is terrible. Josh Norman's penalty you know, on on third down or fourth and what well, would, would, would have been fourth and goal for the Cardinals that you know extends their drive. It's just fucking. It's embarrassing. I mean, and they're three. Are they three and five? They're three and five now. Ironically, only a game out of the playoffs. But it's it's not even about that. Like, I I, I now am on the train of the criticism of Kyle Shanahan. He's okay. his X's and O's are generally good. Yes. You know, for the most part. I think I think though he out out thinks himself. The Niners only ran the ball eleven times. Eleven times. And in the entire the, game, in the entire game, he threw the ball forty times. Uh, and Jimmy G's not built. That's that. just not. That's not. I, don't think, I mean, he you know, obviously <clears throat> he can throw the ball forty times, but that's not his game. I mean, I I think at the end of the game they kind of needed to throw the ball, but still, through the course of the game, the Niners should not have any less than twenty carries in a game, based on the way they run their yeah. you know their scheme and, and whatnot. And I would love I know to, they, they got running backs that are hurt, but Elijah Mitchell is very capable. Yes, he's very capable. And I would love to know what the Niners' record is under the Shanahan regime mm-hmm. when they have 20 plus carries or more because i bet you they win a lot of those games yeah i would think so right i would think so i mean it's it's kind of hard to, to make that you know because when you're winning you, you run, run the ball more the ball, right no, but but i think balance needs to be a huge part of this team and they had none of that i've heard a lot of <clears throat> or the one podcast that, or one sh- you know podcast show that i listen to they make it seem like or one of the guys on the show seem makes it seem like Shanahan only has this job still because of his last name or like what he, you know, being Mike Shanahan's son. Yeah, I mean, that could be a, a big reason why he even got to to where he is is because yeah. of his name too. I think that's yeah. that would be the the more relevant point. But I think he has his job still because Jed York has just pretty much put his faith into John Lynch and, and mm-hmm. Kyle Shanahan. They're they're if they get if one of them gets fired, the other one gets fired. Yeah, pretty much. 
I agree. I think, yeah, as long as Lynch is there, he'll be there. I think the other thing that's keeping this thing alive is the fact that they drafted a rookie quarterback with the third pick overall yeah. and made a huge trade to get to that pick. Yes, exactly. Um, so that's going to keep that that marriage around. Um, I think just a big thing with Shanahan is as much of an X as an O's guy as he is, he is the opposite as far as, you know, the discipline. I feel, like he has, I feel like he doesn't have common sense. He doesn't have control. Of, I don't think he has control of this team right now. At least right now. I, I mean, I don't want well, I'm talking. I'm talking like in... Like in the past, like you know the Falcon, the Falcon Super Bowl. I think he was a little cocky. Yeah, in, I think in, he is in a little the Niners Super Bowl too. You know I think I mean? he's a little cocky. Um, I mean, you never want to think that the game is over before it is. Yeah. Which I think that's maybe where his mind was at in both those situations. But you got to be a little smarter. I agree. Um, but yeah, I think the fact that I mean Josh Norman needs to get the fuck out of town, like right now. Yeah. He's he's got to be gone. Um, if they don't do that, I, I don't really have much faith in, in their decision making. Honestly, I just I don't get it anymore. Like, what are we doing here? Yeah. So I think the Niners got Kyle Shanahan needs to look himself in the mirror and say I need to be better because he has not been very good this year. I mean, it's fancy of the plays that he run he runs are you know he's, he's got to get it together. So two things, I saw something that I mentioned to you yesterday that he has the same regular season winning percentage as Chip Kelly. As the Niners had, I think, or I think, or as overall, I think overall, it's got to be because Chip Kelly was only yeah. there for fifteen games. Which, okay, yeah, you that's, know. that's. I mean, I don't, I don't like to look at the record too much because he inherited a dumpster fire of a, of a franchise essentially. Um, and then Shannon obviously, did. yeah, Shane ended, and obviously last year, like the injuries were just unreal. Which, to some degree, there's talk about, hey, maybe the their training staff is just shit, and he needs to hire some better people. I don't know. I don't. I don't really know those details, or want to get into them. So, do you want to? Do you want Shanahan to be the coach still? Are you okay with that? I think he <laughs> does. He deserve another year? Maybe not. But I would. I wouldn't. I don't know who. Who are they going to get better? Exactly. I, don't, I really don't know who they're going to get better. Like let's say let's say Shanahan was done with that. Like they you know they fired him. Like I'd want him maybe for the the coach of the Cowboys. I'm not. I wouldn't be tripping. I mean, he, he'd get an offensive coordinator job in, in a heartbeat. Yes. Um, head coach, they, people might not yeah. be on board with that right now. Um, but, man, I don't know. It's, it's, I, I, I do want to see what he could do in a full season with Trey Lance, which I would hope that would be the situation next year. And not that I think Jimmy's the problem right now. He actually he played fine yeah. on Sunday. I, he played fine. Um, I and mean, the Niners were moving the ball as much as they had it. They just shot themselves yeah. in the foot so many times. But do you know the Niners have lost eight straight home games? That's also bad. Which I think is another. That's a, that's, that's a full. That's, that's a full season thing that's on the coaching staff. Like you can't be losing games at home. That's no, bad. That's really bad. Usually, home games means you have the advantage and you yeah. should win. Right. It's, it's another thing too. <laughs> like you, you kind of shit on the new stadium about is that they've never had a home crowd. Like the home field advantage has not been existent there. I've been to Cal State that is a long time ago. That place is that place cool. right. It's cool. You've been there? Yeah. A couple times? Uh I went to three games there. Yeah. All in the same season. Did you ever go any Giants games there or were you not born? Nah. Well, I mean I would have been like four years old. Oh, uh, okay. But your parents never took you there. I, me neither, but no. I went to Cal State once and it was it was cool. Yeah. It was, it was the, a little dumpy, but Yeah. I think the one thing I'm gonna retract from based off what I've said in the past is I always say Jimmy G wins games. Mm-hmm. He kind of doesn't anymore. No, I mean, if you look at his record, it's like was it like twenty five and twelve or something like that, which is good, but it's not like dominant. Like oh, I think I think I'm getting caught up in what they were in twenty nineteen. I think that's why I keep saying that about Jimmy. That was a really good team. Like they yeah. just they put it all yeah. together that year. They really did. So I always said, you know, I always thought, you know, you and maybe not you, but Niner fans in general were always hard on Jimmy G. Yeah, and I think he's. I always thought like he wins games, but now I think about it, the Niners have lost. They've, they've only had one winning season in Shanahan's yes. tenure, and Jimmy's been there for most of it. So I think <clears throat> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay back, I'm going to lay off of that for a little bit. I think the, the, another thing that kind of distorts that is the fact that when Jimmy first started, he went 6-0 to finish the season. Yes. Um, so that helps that record a little bit. I just think, I think the Super Bowl year has me thinking he still could win, or wins a lot of games, but he, he doesn't. Yeah. As of right now, he does not win a lot of games. He does a lot of games to, to yes, injury, that's too. That's true. So. So that's something I'm not going to say anymore until the Niners have 
some kind of win streak, right, which right. I hope they don't. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and I don't want to go too much too further into this, but it, it really is not Jimmy Garoppolo's fault at this point. Jimmy played yeah. great against the Bears in the second half, at least, and like I said, they were moving the ball against the Cardinals. They just continuously made mistakes to to end drives prematurely. Yes. So I actually, and he did throw a pick late in the game. I didn't see it, but it, it was over at that point. Yeah. All right. Uh, also, the Raiders uh, they they blew the game that they should have you know should have won. Yeah, we mentioned yeah we mentioned the Raiders. Yeah, yeah. Even, even without the even with the Henry Ruggs situation, they should be beating the Giants. The Giants are not a good team. No. They lost twenty three sixteen on the road. Uh, three turnovers uh, was a big factor, and only again one for six in the red zone. Not good. Not good. So, but uh, they but, have to bounce back. But I had three Raiders players on my fantasy team, and they all did, did pretty. Fine. They did pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> no complaints there. <laughs> if you were to ask me based off that, I'd be like, yeah, the Raiders probably won that game. So I had three players go over, you know, over ten points, which you know, fantasy. Right. That's all I ask for is give me ten more. Yeah. If you're, you know, if unless you're a star, you want more. Or, or unless, like, I mean, unless you're a quarterback, I want, I want like closer to twenty. At yeah. Least. yeah. But I'm, I don't get greedy. You know what I mean? Right. I, I just try to, I just want to win games. <laughs> so. You got anything else from week nine, my friend? Um, no, I don't. All right. I just, the, the Cowboys. Don't you want to talk about? Yeah, it? No. we're done with that. You, uh, you went in on, you went in on the Niners, though. I'm proud of you. Yeah. It's. You going for it? It's, it's tough right now. Did you pick them to go to the championship game? I think I did this year. No, I didn't. Pick I think I picked them to maybe win the first round of the playoffs. Let me see. Hold on. The shitty thing is, like, they do have a chance to make the playoffs if they <laughs> get their shit together, but I just, I don't even know if I want that to happen. <laughs> I, picked, I picked the Niners to go to the championship game. <laughs> <laughs> you ass. <laughs> I'm glad you're wrong about that. Or you're glad you're wrong about that. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, I'd point. like to be right, but I'm glad I'm wrong. Yeah. Um, so, picks. We suck at this. We win. But we're going to keep doing it. Right? We have to. We have to. No giving up. We uh, we have not... Neither of us had a winning record yet. Yeah, and we both went over. We went again. over. <laughs> so can we give a... So last week, we, last week, we both picked the Packers over the Chiefs. Yeah. Because the line was even. And of course, the day after, Aaron, Aaron Rodgers, Rodgers... COVID. Test positive for COVID. Do we want to talk about Aaron Rodgers or no? No. Nah, I don't give a fuck about Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> yeah, bro. fuck that guy. That dude's broken my heart. Before we do this, I'm going to just... Rogers. Rogers. All right, back in action. Um, yeah, but uh, here we are. You're four and fourteen. What are you? Six and twelve. Just killing it. <laughs> we'd be uh, we'd be close to bankrupt if we were actually throwing money. Yeah. <laughs> this is hard. This is harder than it looks. You, you know what's crazy? Harder is than it seems. The these. You know, the, the guys that are professionals, they take so much into account, like, the injuries that happen. And, and not that we don't, but there's there's injuries that we don't even know about. That's like, true. on the, yeah. you know, defensive linemen or offensive yeah. linemen for a yeah. team that we don't even think about. Yeah, that true. plays a huge factor. There's also, you know, teams that we don't really think of, of having, like, a good running game versus their bad run defense and that being a huge factor in the game. There's a reason why they get paid. Yes, yeah, so we don't do a lot of – we're not doing the deep dive an- no. analysis. And I don't think the people that listen to us like, really expect that. Right. Right, but that's that's why this is hard, um, and that's why the lines that are set, you, you look at it, you're like, why? It's hard. Right? Like, it's but, hard. But there's a reason why. Yeah. You know? If you were to ask me the first time we started doing this, if we had a perfect week, just for two games. Yeah, I'd just like, one one time. I'd be like, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, we have plenty of time to do it, but yeah. we have not done it yet. <laughs> that's that's the goal. <laughs> right. I don't even care, you know, you know. obviously you have our record. Yeah. Like I said, we, like I said last week, or a couple weeks ago. Yeah. I don't think of this as a competition. Not really. I mean, I, I just want to be as good as I can. I just want one of us to get two in a row. Right. Or to get two right two in, in a week. week. Yeah. So who do you got? Uh, so I am going with the Chargers, giving two and a half to the Vikings at home. Okay. Um, Chargers have been up and down, but I think I like that. Yeah. Uh, it's, they only have to win by a field goal. So. And then I'm also taking the Patriots, giving one and a half to Cleveland at home. So. Wow. I don't love that one, but the thought of... Odell Beckham playing against his own team in the first game. Be, his <laughs> old team in his first game would be kind of funny. Um, Possibly, obviously. I'm glad you mentioned that because I'm picking the Browns. You're picking the Brownies. I'm picking the Brownies. Right. I do like the, the fact that the Browns don't have that hanging over them exactly. anymore. Um, the Patriots have been playing good ball lately. So. And I know Bill Belichick's good against young quarterbacks. I know Baker's not super young, but he's yeah. still in his late 20s. Yeah. 
I just like I I think one and a half for the Patriots. I mean, that's not that's not a, that's not a big number at all. I, 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 also, I, I think the Browns win that game straight up. They could, yeah, no, absolutely. And I mean, one and a half is basically a pick them. Um, but I do like Bill Belichick against the Browns because I feel like he has it's it up for them. It's his own team, oh, yeah. his old team. Yeah, I feel like, like he has it up for them. What's your other pick? My other pick is the Raiders over the Chiefs. I said that earlier. Right. And um, the Raiders are getting how many points in this game? The Chiefs are getting two and a half. Because the Chiefs, Chiefs? Are, Chiefs are favored. Right, so they're giving up two and a half. Or, yeah. yeah. So the Raiders are uh, getting two and a half. So, yeah, two and a half point dogs. Yeah. And they're in Las Vegas or uh, in KC? I don't, don't know. know. No worries. I don't care. <laughs> I'm picking the Raiders. There we go. Against a struggling <clears throat> Chiefs team. Yeah, they, they look rough right now. I mean, 13 points and, and against the Packers who didn't have Aaron Rodgers, which I know he doesn't play defense, but... So if any listeners hear us, hear what we just said, pick it opposite because that's what's going to happen. Pretty much, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter what we pick because it's going to be wrong. I'm, I'm embarrassed about the Raiders and losing to the Giants. That, that one sucked. <laughs> yeah, it does suck. Like, I, I thought that was in the fucking bag. I don't care about... I mean, even with the Henry Ruggs shit. That's bad. Yeah, because I picked the Ravens over the Vikings. Which they, they still won the game. They beat them by but that was a, that's what I was telling you last week. I didn't like that number at five and a half because they'd have to pretty much win by a touchdown. Yeah, that's or, a good point. Which I didn't think. And the Ravens were down big in that game. They were losing. You're right. You're right. Lamar Jackson's looking pretty good. I like Lamar, man. Also, I know I know Rodgers has COVID, but I'm feeling pretty good about my uh, Bills Packers Super Bowl. I know they both lost. Yeah. And the Bills lost really The bad Bills, game. I think the Bills, are, I, I wouldn't, you know, lose confidence. I know, I know losing to the Jags, Jags doesn't look very good, but I wouldn't lose too much confidence no. in that. I'm feeling pretty good about that. And the Packers, obviously, you know, they're a threat. For sure. All right. And that's it for the NFL. Kind of getting close to the end here. NASCAR. You ready for this? <laughs> yes. I'm not ready for this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you gotta take on a shot. Woo. You might need to unleash this maker's mark. Oh, there you go. Pop. It's not even open yet? Not even it's open. Hurts just so you know, the top of that reminds me of uh, the cheese. <laughs> oh, yeah, the little, uh, the Bay Bells. Bay Bells, yeah. Bay Bells, yeah. Those are good. <laughs> Those well, are good. I think they're, they're Fontana or something like that. It's, it's good. Whatever it is, it's good. Whatever it's it good. is. It's good cheese. Good Good cheese, yes. No doubt about it. So, um, Kyle, so Kyle Larson won the uh, NASCAR championship. Good for him. So if that means, for me, I essentially won the championship. Yes, you did. You did indeed. Running away. Running away. I beat Ashley by almost uh, 40. Or over 40, 40, 42. 42. Yeah, 42. Doing our math, right? 42. 42. You're more of a math guy than I am. <laughs> Apparently, I can't read. So the final, the final house standings were me, number one. With 175. Yep. Ashley in second with 133. Danny in third. He podium. Made the podium, yeah. 91. Good job, Danny. Dylan close. 88. Fourth yeah. place in 88. Alex, 74 in fifth. Garrett was 64 in sixth. Sixth, yeah. And then you can't. You got 44 the whole season. <laughs> Apparently, Team uh, team Stuart Haas was not the right move this wow. year. Wow. And so Emerson's taking a shot because he had a bold prediction, if you guys remember. They said no racer or no driver would have more than five more than five wins. And Kyle Larson with the win over the weekend had ten wins for the season. So it doubled what you said. Do I need to take two? No. (laughs) You wanna do two? Okay. Just trying to be fair. I mean I may do fucking Eat an egg and a tequila shot. <laughs> that was over a, a, a correct prediction, though. That was one of your better predictions. This one's one of your worst this is, ones. Since it was a bad one. And Emerson. <laughs> I love that sound. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure it's nice up below with that. So Emerson's uh, shooting Maker's Mark out of these nice dessert shooters mm-hmm. shot glasses. What a dominant season, by the way. Kind of came, came out of nowhere, too, right? A little I mean, he joined Hendrick. Coming off the the year where he was suspended for the whole year because um, of the race racial comment situation, yeah, um, it's it's pretty crazy how well he was embraced this year. Because um, do you remember when we went to the the NASCAR race? There was tons of Kyle Larson well, here. Well, well, let's. Uh, I don't remember the remember the race. Fair enough. Okay. Fair enough. But 
I saw a ton of Kyle Larson here. Yeah, okay. and I know he's he's from uh, Elk Grove, so he's relatively local. Okay. Um, but still, I, I was kind of shocked. I mean, maybe it's just NASCAR having the, you know, the type of fan base that they are, you know, Southerners don't really care about yeah, politics, yeah. or that, that kind of politics. Yes, yeah. I, exactly. I don't want to point fingers. But. No. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, I mean, good for him. What a, what a rebound. I mean, I'm sure he's not really that type of person. Not to assume anything, but yeah. um, good for him. Ten wins. One of the most dominant seasons really of all time, I think. Really? Someone said that he was, like, one of two, two or three drivers to win ten races, have, like, a certain amount of laps led. And, wow, right. and, and, like, uh, I can't remember what the other one was, but... And win the championship or something like that. Yeah. For me, what's crazy is, you know, in our pool at least, Brad Kozlowski is my number one. Oh, yeah, he was your guy. My yeah. guy, and then... Yeah, you got to draft Kyle I, Larson. I draft Kyle Larson, and um, it worked out for me. <laughs> in in <Right>. spades. <laughs> So next year, so next year, we don't know what we're gonna do yet yeah. for our pool. Well, no decisions made yet. But it's pretty pretty safe to say I'm gonna probably choose Cal Larson or keep Cal Larson. I would think so. Yes. Yeah. So. Cheers uh, to you. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. And do you see me now? I'm not boasting. I'm happy I won. It's nice to have the the bragging rights, and I hope I hope and I also I also hope that everybody who was in this pool stays in the pool. Right. Yeah. You know, because we were not doing Ooh. we're not doing anything for any kind of cash. You no. Know. Maybe maybe we will maybe down the line we'll down the line, but appreciate wow. appreciate everybody for being a part of this. That one hurt. Joining, yeah, that was fun. And we've talked about this. It's one of those things where like, no, we don't like. I mean, I I kind of lost interest in NASCAR a few yeah. you know up until a few years ago. Yeah. And then we got back into it because of this. So yeah. I'm, I'm happy we do. But this is the only reason why I play, and this is the only reason why we mentioned NASCAR really. Yeah. Is the pool. Yeah. And I don't know if our listeners like. Or, you know, enjoy hearing us. I mean, it's such a small segment. I know. Fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. We love you all love for you watching all. and listening. Thank you. Thank you. We're not saying goodbye right now, but no, no. Uh, no. I didn't mean that. That's, that's what I meant, want to say. So no more NASCAR, though. No more NASCAR. NASCAR, NASCAR is, season's done. Is the Daytona 500 will be February, like, 18th, I think, next year. They moved, pushed it back a week because the Super Bowl is actually even happening back yeah. a week because of the extended season. Oh, wow, 18 okay. weeks. Nice. All I gotta say about NASCAR right now is we have to go back to Sonoma, right? Yes, we're going. I want to go to the Daytona 500. It's probably not gonna happen next year, but. Oh, but you want, really but you want to go to Sonoma again? I definitely want to go to yes. Sonoma again. Yes. <clears throat> and I don't want to get us hammered, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely have to do it the same way, though. Have to. Early tailgate. Have time. to. I think we we nailed it. We that was. <laughs> I mean, the beer that I table at the fucking tailgate. Yeah, How do great. you beat that? It was great. How do you beat that? We cooked breakfast. It was it was perfect. Couldn't get them in much better. That was, yeah, tailgating, that's what you look for. Yeah. It was kind of unfortunate how windy it got at, at the end while we were waiting to get out, but yeah, it is what it is. We had a great time. It was, yeah, we're, we got to do it again. Yeah. Next year, I got to imagine they're going to have more fans, too. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, it was nice being able to kind of just sit wherever you wanted. But it won't be like that next yeah. year. Probably not. All right, Gage, what time is it? It's time for last call. We made it. Emmy, what do you got? College basketball season begins today. And I don't really? care. And I don't care. <laughs> and I don't think anybody else does. <laughs> Talk to me when it's March Madness. Right, right. Because but, college basketball, to me, is just... A cesspool of mediocrity. It's pretty tough to watch. I mean, I do. The only reason I have any interest in it is to see like who are maybe the next NBA stars, but that's about it. Hmm. Really about it. What's Stanford looking like right now? <laughs> okay, probably shitty. Cool. Once again, um, have we done? Do we do like March Madness stuff on this show when it gets there? Have we done it before? We like sort of put a pool together. We should definitely try to do do something bigger this year. Okay. We we definitely I think I feel like we we failed at that last year. We should have done something more. Well, they didn't have one last year, I don't think. Yeah, they did. Or two years ago they didn't. Two years ago they didn't. Uh, or a year Gonzaga, ago. Gonzaga, Baylor beat Gonzaga. Remember? Well, we did a well we did <laughs> we did an ISR pool. But I don't think we did. We really talk about it. In Not our, much. Okay. Yeah. No, we did we did one for. We didn't make a big deal. Yes. Out of it. Yeah. It was okay. like four people. In our yeah. Group. But yes, college basketball was underway. I was playing Longwood today. Longwood? Longwood. <laughs> That's the name of the school. <laughs> For sure. <laughs>
Uh, you got anything? Yes, uh, Chris Paul last week, like right, the day after we did our last show, was he uh, passed Steve Nash for third all time in assists. Nice. That's that's a couple of Chris Paul shout outs in recent weeks. Yeah. Because he was like the first to 10,000, 10,000, right? Or 20,000, 10,000? 20,000, 10,000, I think, yeah. So good for Chris Paul. Nice. You know, I feel like he's kind of turned his whole persona from being someone who bitches a lot. He still does bitch. But, you know. <laughs> but he's like, I think he's like, he's really, since he's been on the sun. Yeah, I, I'll agree with that. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. He's kind of changed it up. I don't know if he hasn't done it on purpose. I, I wonder if it's just because it's easier to root for the Suns as a, because they just kind of came out of nowhere. And he just joined the Clippers. The Clippers. Like, the Club Club City. And, yeah, that was kind of lame. And then Houston was weird. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, USA is playing Mexico in the World Cup qualifiers on Friday. Uh, Mexico is leading the pool right now. Okay. Uh, USA is still in, a, I think they're in second. In the, oh, wow. And I think the top three get an automatic qualification to the World Cup. Um, and then the fourth team gets to play for like a, like a uh, qualification match that is like right before the World Cup. Yeah. But we want to get in there no matter what. Oh, yeah. um, USA missed the last World Cup, which was ridiculous and embarrassing. Yes. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for this match. USA has actually had Mexico's number uh, this year. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. And they play them again next March yeah. in this bracket. I want to give a shout out to Ron Washington, third base coach oh, yeah. for the Atlanta Braves. That's right. He finally won a championship. Good for him. After being in the MLB or professional baseball for over fifty years, yeah, as a player slash coach. Yes, and he, he was on, he was the manager of those Ranger teams that went back to back. Right, lost to the Giants, lost right. to the Cardinals. No, not sorry. Well, right. lo- Giants, yeah. Cardinals, right. right? Right. Tough, but he finally got his ring. Yeah, he did. Happy for him. You know, fifty years doing anything for fifty years, even living for fifty years is a lot. Right. You know what right. I mean? He's he's a well respected. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, man in baseball, so good for him. Yeah, definitely happy. Happy about that. <laughs> Did you? Want to <laughs> <Yeah. this? laughs> so, because it, it was announced today, today. I, I can't remember uh, when the uh, the card is, what like what the date is. I think I got it. Okay. But uh, so it's the one where Jake Paul is, fi- or is it Jake Paul or Logan Paul, is fighting um, somebody. I don't have the, uh, I don't have that information. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's on December eighteenth. December eighteenth. So as Jake, right, as of right now, yeah. it's scheduled for yeah. December eighteenth. I believe it's Jake Paul fighting somebody, but on the other card, Darren Williams, former NBA star, is fighting Frank Gore, former 49ers star, in one of the in one of the uh, prelims. <laughs> Fucking hilarious. So let me give you the tail of the tip. It's uh, <laughs> Frank Gore is five nine two twelve. Darren Williams is six three two hundred. Who you got? Stupid. I mean, it. We we kind of talked about this in a group message today, but I I don't I don't see Frank Gore going down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he's six inches shorter than this dude. Like, he, yeah. I don't feel like he has a chance. That's just not fair. And most NBA players have you know a wingspan that's longer than their their height. Are these guys getting paid for this? You think? I hope. I fucking hope. And these guys, these guys can't be hurting for money like that, right? I, mean, I wouldn't I think. I mean, right I'm, back, you don't make as much money as the other guys, or at least you didn't back then. I'm taking Frank Gore for one reason. I'm rooting for Frank Gore. <laughs> because with a name like Frank the Tank, <laughs> you can't... Or the Inconvenient, the inconvenient Truth. truth. <laughs> Darren Williams is going to get his ass Yeah, beat. he's going to get the Inconvenient Truth. And also, how often do these guys box? Like when, like when? I'm going to guess they never have. <laughs> Until they started training today, <laughs> this is just like what's, what. What what sucks for boxing is that they're making a mockery. They're making of it. a mockery. <laughs> but what also sucks is I'm actually interested in watching this. You know what's what? What I'm kind of sad about is the fact that Frank Gore beat the shit out of his head for like 16 seasons in the NFL, and he's, he's like, willing to to box. Like, what are you doing, bro? Just give it up. It's. It's ridiculous. This, what are we doing here? Uh, it's like it's just like <laughs> it's like the celebrities that go on dancing stars. They just they like or the former <laughs> athletes that go yeah. on dancing with yeah. stars. Like you really need the fucking the attention. 
Like get over yourselves. I hope it's I hope it's a good fight. I mean, but... it's it's kind of embarrassing, but it's funny at the same time. <laughs> Uh, but who knows? I'm not. I've never been in their shoes, so I can't no, say. No. Uh, I shouldn't. I shouldn't. They'll probably make a couple million dollars, or I mean, not a million, but they'll make a they'll decent, make, decent make amount some, of money. They'll make some change for what? Yeah. What? Thirty minutes of work? Yeah. You know, they're probably not even gonna fight very hard. There's no way one of these guys get knocked out. I don't think. I hope so. That'll be hilarious. Any kind of fight. I just don't see how Frank Gore's gonna reach him. He's fucking six inches taller than him. Any kind of. Fight. You don't see guys fight with in real boxing with that big of a disparity no, in, no, you in don't. height. No, you just don't. That's not not real. It's just it's it's more of the wild wow factor. <laughs> it is. They're just trying to get an audience. It's it's pretty fun. But stupid. <laughs> I like how you put L O L O L O L. That's pretty much what I thought when I saw it. Because it is a joke. <laughs> it's a total joke. Man, that's that's pretty bad. Anything else, sir? No. I got nothing. Uh thank you all for watching and listening. Uh it's been it's been real. Oh, it is real. Yeah. This was a this is a long episode. A very long episode. We have been we have been shooting on this one. Yeah. I think uh I, we we talked a lot about baseball. <laughs> Maybe a little too long about baseball. I mean yeah. Buster Posey is 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 gonna be no longer on the field anymore, so that's that's big. So Yeah, whatever. But it is what it is. Uh fuck the Niners. <laughs> yes. And we'll see you next week. Peace.